how. Are you okay? Yeah. You okay, Mom? I'm okay. Thank you, everybody. Or I could just sell them all over the floor. I just spilled them all over the floor. And if you like these kinds of videos, I need to know. So either leave a comment down below or give this video a thumbs up. It helps me out. I'm here for you. <laughs>
home preserving. The difference between the recipes is one has sugar and horseradish in it and I don't really want that. What I'm taking from the pickled pepper mix is the method for canning whole peppers and then the recipe that I'm actually making the brine from is from the pickled hot pepper recipe from the from this book here. All right, let's get started. I'm super excited. If you are as excited as I am, give this video a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And if you like these kinds of videos, I need to know. So either leave a comment down below or give this video a thumbs up. It helps me out. I'm here for you. First thing that we are going to do is fill our water bath canner with water. And then I'm going to get it warmed up on the stove while I'm doing other things. Okay, so the ingredients that I have for both of these recipes are vinegar, water, garlic, and pickle crisp are the four main things. The one thing that I will be adding to the pepperoncini peppers, some red pepper flakes to each of the jars. I'd also like to note that the garlic that we're using, we grew, and I'm super proud of that. Here are the jalapenos that I got from our garden. These are the pepperoncinis from our garden, and one sad, lonely Hungarian wax pepper that I'm just gonna throw in there for fun. I started the water for the water bath canner just to get it warmed up. The dishwasher actually just beeped and stopped all done and completely sterilized. Good timing here. I'm gonna leave them in there with the door closed because they'll stay nice and hot in there while I'm doing this. Now I'm going to wash the peppers just under water in my sink. I'm gonna also inspect them for some yucky parts like this one. Um, anything that looks like something may have eaten their way through it, um, I'll put in the chicken scraps pile to feed the chickens with. I don't know if it matters to anybody, but we do have well water here. I don't know if that matters to anybody. <laughs> if they're wondering, the water that we're using, it's all from, most of it's from our tap or the filtered tap on our refrigerator, but it comes from our own private well. First thing I'm going to do is open up the garlic here. I'm really excited about it because I haven't opened one of these yet. This is a music variety of garlic. And I only need three cloves, so I'll save another one for later. This one has four. Wow, these look, these look really nice and it smells so good. And I want three cloves of garlic. Give it a little smashy smashy. Um, I'm fully aware that my hands are going to smell very strongly of garlic, and I'm okay with that. Put those off to the side for later. The only things I need to do to the pepperoncinis is I'm gonna be putting slits into them, and then the jalapenos I'm just gonna be cutting into rings. Find some rubber gloves because I'm going to slice up the jalapenos. And I don't want the oils on my hands because that's hard to wash off. These are just final gloves. Because the oils, once that gets on your skin, it is, it doesn't come off. Then you go ahead and touch your eyeball or something and it just burns like crazy, so. All right, so excited to be here. We grew these peppers. <laughs> sliced up the jalapenos and I have put the directions for the pickled peppers, the whole peppers was to put a slit into the pepper on opposite sides. So I did one at the top and one on the bottom. The other thing that I did was I measured to see how many peppers I actually have. And I have a 
about just a little bit over two quarts of the pepperoncinis and then I have roughly the same for jalapenos. So the recipe calls for six cups sliced hot banana peppers, four cups sliced jalapeno peppers, and one cup sliced serrano peppers. So that would be 11 cups of peppers. I probably have around 10 cups of peppers here. The brine recipe is for about 11 cups of sliced peppers. So hopefully it will be enough for what I have here. I'm going to go ahead and make the brine for the peppers and then while that's cooking on the stove, I will go ahead and pack the jars with the peppers. The other thing that should be noted is the water bath canner behind me. I didn't bring it to a complete boil, but the water is definitely heated up, so it won't take as long for me to get it up to a boiling point once the jars are in there. It says to combine vinegar, water, and garlic, bring to a boil over medium heat, Reduce heat and boil gently for five minutes until garlic flavor has infused the liquid and discard the garlic. I'm going to add six cups of white vinegar and this is the vinegar that I'm using. We wanna add two cups of water. We're adding three cloves of garlic that we grew in our garden, and they are very large cloves of garlic. I'm gonna go ahead and add this to the water. And now we're gonna bring it to a boil over medium high heat. While that is coming to a boil, I'm gonna go ahead and get the jars ready, packed with the peppers, and ready to have the liquid poured in over them. So I'm gonna start with the jalapenos. Ow. Are you okay? Yeah. You okay, Mom? I'm okay, thank you, everybody. You okay, Jakey? Yes, Mom. A couple times I was canning last year, I didn't clean enough jars, and it's just kind of a pain when you're in the swing of things to go and get other jars. So I always just make sure that I have a bunch of extras just in case I happen to have more than I had anticipated. Because what I would do is I would look at the recipe and it would say, this recipe makes six pints. And so I would go ahead and get six pint jars, and it would end up making like eight pints or something else, I, I would end up needing more jars and it's just kind of a pain. So I just always go ahead and make sure that I have way too many jars cleaned and sterilized and ready to go. The recipe that says it makes 11 cups of sliced peppers, it also says it makes about five pint jars. I'm using for the sliced pickled jalapenos. They're the regular mouth half pint jars. And I'm going to try and leave a half inch head space. So a half inch between the stuff inside the jar and the lid. feel like I might need to make more brine. What's on the stove isn't enough now that I'm looking at how much I actually have and how much it's filling the jars. So I think I'm going to go ahead and add another six cups of vinegar and another two cups of water. And the garlic that's in there is enormous, so it should be more than enough. I'd rather have too much and use it in something else than not enough and wish that I had done this earlier. All right, so now I have the peppers inside the jars here and I'm gonna go ahead and use the pickle packer thingy that Steve got me, tamp them down, add more if needed. And now I'm going to pack them down again. I feel like some of these have too much, so I'm going to Go ahead and move some. So the recipe says to use an eighth of a teaspoon of pickle crisp per pint jar. I'm using half pint jars, so I'm going to add half of an eighth of a teaspoon. <laughs> I don't think I have something to measure that. I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it. An eighth of a teaspoon is half of a quarter teaspoon, which is what I have. So I'm going to just add a little tiny bit, maybe like a third of the way up the quarter teaspoon of pickle crisp to each of the jars. That's how much I'll be adding to each of the jars. It's not really focusing that great. Or I could just spill them all over the floor. I just spilled them all over the floor. 
<laughs> let's try that again. Fortunately, I didn't spill this. I only spilled what was in here. So, because that would have been really bad. The brine is still cooking. So I think I will go ahead and move on to the pepperoncini peppers. I am using the uh, ball wide mouth pint jars. It is one of my favorite size jars. I use it for most everything I make is it's just the perfect size when I'm cooking or I don't know it's just like it's just my favorite go-to size plus the wide mouth is way easier to fill and it's way easier to pour so I just I prefer that one um all right this should be interesting because I've never done something like this before I guess you just pack the peppers in I think I'm just gonna add a little bit of red pepper flake to each one of the jars and the pickle crisp so these are pint jars, so I'm going to go ahead and add the actual eighth of a teaspoon, which again, I don't have an eighth of a teaspoon measuring spoon, so I'm just going to do half of the quarter teaspoon. And then I'm going to add about the same, I'm going to say a pinch of red pepper flake to each jar. And then we shall try and pack these peppers. When I was harvesting the pepperoncini peppers, I tried to harvest different sizes because I knew that some of them are really large and they were going to take up a lot of space in the jar, but then there was going to be, I didn't want to leave a lot of room in the jars. So we want to leave a half inch head space. Now I'm going to go ahead and ladle in the brine and I'm not going to include the garlic pieces. Alrighty, so it says pack peppers into hot jars to within a generous half inch of top of jar, ladle hot pickling liquid into jar to cover peppers, leaving half inch headspace and add one eighth. Okay, we did all that. I'm gonna go ahead and ladle in the liquid. I'm just gonna ladle in every single jar and then I will go back. Mm, some of these need more for sure now that they've settled. All right, now that I have the liquid in each of the jars, I'm gonna go ahead and use my bubble tool to make sure I got all the bubbles out. Try and get as much of the bubbles out as I can, and then I will go ahead and measure the headspace, make sure it's good, remove any liquid that doesn't need to be there, or add more liquid if it needs it. The thing with the whole peppers I'm already noticing is there's a lot of bubbles. So the half inch of headspace is right here at this line and make sure that there's a half inch head space between the top of the jar and the contents of it. So a lot of these need more liquid. Whew, it's getting hot in here. All right, so kind of tedious getting the whole peppers in there. I've never done it before, so there was a lot of bubbles and then I couldn't figure out, I had to keep adding liquid. Doubling the brine recipe was a good idea and I'm glad I did it. So, the next thing is now that the jars are packed with the peppers, I'm going to take a clean t-shirt rag and some more vinegar. I'm gonna go around the rim of each jar. This is going to clean off any residue or dust or whatever might be on the rim of the jar that might prevent the lid from sealing to the jar. So we're just going to go ahead and clean off the rims and I also turned the water bath canner back on. The other thing I should say is I did before I started this whole process of washing the jars and everything else, I did inspect them for cracks and stuff to make sure that there wasn't any chips or anything that would prevent the either the lid from sealing or some sort of other problem. All right, the rims are all wiped off. I'm gonna go ahead and place the lids on top of the jars. I cleaned them off. These were in the container of things that I keep inside the water bath canner when I'm storing it. These were just a bunch of loose lids that have never been used before, so I just wanted to clean them off pretty good before I use them. I am using the magnetic tool to pick them up and put them onto the jar. Okay. 
I was recently in Tractor Supply and they had a ton of lids. They had lids and bands. My husband said that he saw the lids and bands and I went back over and they had a whole bunch of lids in there too, just the lids. So that was nice to see. Now that the lids are on the jars, I'm going to put the bands on finger tight. And if you're like me, I'm confused at what that means <laughs> sometimes because I'm like, is this too tight? Is this not tight enough? It'll be fine. Just tighten it finger tight. So basically like put your fingers on it and twist. And if you can't really do it anymore, you're good. Um, don't crank on it. Don't tighten it down so much like that you wouldn't be able to get it off. Here, I'll show you. Take the band in your fingers. Put it on the top of the jar. Okay, now do finger tight. Okay, so don't crank on it like this, just do finger tight. That's it, that's all you do. Don't panic. Do it again. Finger tight, okay? Okie dokie, we're getting there. Making progress. Place jars in canner, ensuring that they are completely covered with water. Bring to a boil and process for 10 minutes. Remove canner lid, wait five minutes, then remove jar, cool, and store. So using our handy dandy jar grippers here, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the pepperoncini. Once again, these are wide mouth pint jars. Now we're going to submerge them down into the water. You want it to be about an inch or, like an inch or so of water over the top of the jars maybe a little too much water in here so I think I'm going to needle some out so it doesn't get all nuts that's what it looks like taking a bath so now we're gonna go ahead and put the lid back on the water bath canner we are going to wait for it to come up to a steady boil and then once it's there, we're gonna let it sit, we're gonna set the timer for 10 minutes and let the cans process. Once they are done, after the 10 minutes is over, we're gonna turn the burner off, just take the lid off and set the timer again for five minutes, just to give the jars time to acclimate to a cooler temperature. So the pickled jalapenos just finished. They've been sitting, resting for five minutes, and now I'm gonna pull them out of the canner on and put them onto a towel on my countertop. <laughs> and the popping sound. So it was the best, just the best. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lift these out. So far, so good. So I got, um, I love that sound. I got 12 half pint jars of pickled jalapenos and six pint jars of pickled pepperoncinis. I'll just leave these sitting here overnight and then tomorrow before I put them away in our pantry I'll remove the bands off of the jars. The water that's in the water bath canner is completely clean so I'm just gonna go ahead and use that tomorrow when I make jam. I don't have a lot of strawberries and blueberries, but I think I have enough to get a couple small jars, so that would be exciting. Yeah, so this is how they look. I think so far they came out really good. Canning peppers, pickled peppers, is right up there with canned whole tomatoes. It's one of the easiest things that you can can, I think. This is a great warm up for me. I haven't canned anything since last year, so it was good to kind of 
get back into it a little bit and remember my routine for how I do things. Once they're cooled and before I put them into the pantry, I'll label each of the jars what's inside the jar and then I will also put the date that I canned it. We like to keep things on the shelf for about a year or so. If it's over that, then you know, it's, you, know you just kind of have to check it and make sure that it still tastes good and that it still smells okay. And it's kind of everybody's personal preference on how long they let things sit on the shelf, you know. The guidelines say a year or so, so we try and stick with that. Most of the stuff that we can, I can. For our family at four, it usually lasts us about a year. I'm hoping this year that I can can a little bit extra to give away. Alrighty, so that'll do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Let me know in the comments below if you are interested in seeing any other canning videos. Thanks for watching. We will see you next time. Bye.